All right, let's talk about low latency monitoring today. All right, so the option that we're talking about in Pro Tools today is under the options menu at the top of your screen. And it's this bottom option here, low latency monitoring. And I think the default is for it to be off, but you can check it off and turn it on. So when the checkbox is here, it is on. So right now I have low latency monitoring on. And basically latency is like a technical, my understanding of it at least, is that it's like a technical computer person way of saying delay, right? It has to do with how long things take to process. And I believe my understanding of it is when you have latency, it's usually a, a bad thing, right? It's not an intended delay like we have with our delay plugins. It's just extra time that is being taken by taken up by processing. And you know, you might hear artists, if you're tracking with an artist, you might hear them describe latency as a delay or an echo in their headphones. A lot of times they'll use the word echo. Um, and that's oftentimes because of latency issues. So, you know, that's why a lot of the times when we're looking for something that's super low latency, it has to do with tracking, right? Because things are very timing specific with tracking. You need the real world timing to line up with the Pro Tools timing. Um, and that's a bit harder than getting everything within just Pro Tools to line up, for example. So sometimes our system introduces latency through things like ADDA converters, right? So analog to digital, digital to analog converters. Sometimes it's things like our plugins that can introduce latency. It can just, sometimes it takes some time to process these things. Our computers take time to process things sometimes. And that can introduce a delay between things like our unprocessed signal and our processed signal. Anyway, that's why we have things like delay compensation in Pro Tools. I have a video on delay compensation. Uh, I don't remember how extensive I got with it, but I'll put a card up on the screen for that if you want to check that out. I'm not going to go much into our delay compensation system within this video, but, you know, sometimes we need more than just the automatic delay compensation system that we have within Pro Tools, and that can be why you might want to introduce this low latency monitoring. So one thing that I've been doing, and if you saw some of my videos from a while back, is that because of the latency that's introduced when I'm tracking in Pro Tools, I have been actually monitoring through my console software and then muting my tracks in Pro Tools. And now what I've realized is I can just use low latency monitoring and it effectively does the same thing. So talking about what low latency monitoring actually does is, for example, if you're tracking and you have a track that either record enabled or you have input monitoring enabled, what it'll do is it'll just automatically mute that track for you. So you don't hear that delayed signal that a signal that has latency introduced. And then you can monitor through your actual hardware, for example, the way that I do. And, you know, it's going to be different for everybody. I have a Universal Audio Apollo 8. So I am monitoring through console. The console software is Universal Audio's software for um, using their hardware, basically. So, so that's what I do. So let me kind of show you that a little bit. I'm just going to create a new track, completely new track. Um, and then I'm going to set this microphone that I'm talking into. I believe it's input five. And if I enable that, now I can see the signal, but I'm not going to hear it because I have low latency introduced. Similarly, if I want to record enable it and then record, same idea. It's automatically muting it. I don't have to press this mute button to actually mute the track because low latency monitoring is doing that for me. So I'm going to just really quickly undo this. So turn off low latency monitoring. And what you should be able to hear, I'm not sure if I'll hear it because it depends on my, my screen capture settings. I'm not entirely sure. But I'm going to uncheck this and, and now, now you, you should, should hear, hear a delay. delay. Oh, oh, I, I can, can hear, hear it. it. Yep. yep. So, so there's, there's my, my delay. delay. So, so that's, that's the, the latency. latency. Let me fix that because it's going to drive me crazy. Um, so that's what it's doing for me is it's, it's essentially muting that delayed signal, that signal with latency introduced. So another way of thinking about it is that this setting, low latency monitoring, makes it so that you only hear that direct signal from your interface and not from Pro Tools as well. So it's essentially preventing the signal getting in there that goes from your interface through your DAW and then back through your interface from mixing in with everything else and causing a delay, you know, that little echo, which, you know, that makes it great for recording. All right, so a drawback for this is, you know, you can't hear your plugins while you're recording. You're not hearing the signal from Pro Tools. So if you're adding plugins on these tracks, you're not gonna hear that while tracking. 
but you know, for example, I have console. I can add plugins in console. I haven't tried doing that in theory because it's not really worth the effort. I'll just add my plugins afterwards or just deal with hearing the dry signal. Um, the biggest issue that I run into with this is that the dry signal can sometimes be quieter than I want it to be with everything else in play. So I'll often be cranking the levels in console to make up for that. And then I add my, my you know, compressor plugins later on to the actual track. So that is a drawback. You don't hear those plugins while you're actually tracking. And another thing you'll notice is, let me just hold option and click and drag these to my example track here just to get a couple plugins on there. But you'll notice that when I record enable or input monitor this track, it will bypass these plugins for me. So let's just look at that. So now the plugins are inactive, right? So that's great. That's kind of as expected considering what we said before, right? But if you, for example, leave your track on input monitoring without meaning to or without thinking about what that causes, you can have the problem of my plugins are stuck in bypass and I can't change that. I can't make them active. And then you're wondering why. Well, the answer is probably options, low latency monitoring. monitoring. Let, Let me undo this. this. So you don't have the echo. And now you fixed it. Now your plugins are not stuck in bypass. So if you ever have your plugins stuck in bypass, think about this. This might be it. And you know, similarly, if you put this on, let's see, if you have low latency monitoring on, and then you go to record enable to record, and you're not hearing signal, th that might be not what you desire, right? So I've had people message me on social media and this was their issue. They're like, oh, I'm trying to record. I'm ready to record. I can see the signal, but I can't hear it. Why? And it, sometimes it's this. So a lot of the time it's this. So just keep that in mind. If you're trying to record and you're seeing signal, seeing signal being created, but you're not hearing it while recording, it could be low latency low latency monitoring. And then if you have plugins that are stuck in bypass, it could be that as well. And you know, if you want to hear what you're recording while you're recording it, I always do, right? Then you can hear if there are issues, you can hear how it's coming in. You want to hear it usually, from my experience at least, with my workflow. Uh, just keep in mind that you can figure out however, whatever your hardware is, how you can monitor directly from your hardware. So for me, that's going to console and making sure that those tracks are unmuted and I can hear them directly through console. And another thing to keep in mind is I think that this option actually goes away if you're working in an HD system. So if you have an HD system, you might not even have this option. Don't stress about it. It's because HD systems are automatically dealing with that in, I assume, different ways. But anyway, it's not an option here for HD systems, I believe. I don't have an HD system here, so grain of salt, but I think that's how it works. Okay, and that's basically it. One other thing to keep in mind is if you don't wanna go through this whole process and this whole system and you don't like this workflow specifically, you can try this first and I always do this. So I go setup and then playback engine. If for example, the artist says that they're experiencing an echo, I will go here and I will check the buffer size. Right now I have it set for mixing, but you can make it really low. So what you wanna do, you make it really low, it means the computer's not looking as far ahead to do the processing. So if you set it really low, hopefully that echo will be reduced to the point where it doesn't bother the artist anymore or you know reduced completely. I'm not sure how complete it actually is, but it reduces it. Um, and then if you're mixing, you might want to put it higher so that it can look farther ahead and deal with all your plugins. So the thing to keep in mind about this is if you do set this lower, it might fix that echo, but you might have more CPU error issues if you have a bunch of plugins in your session. So this is why sometimes it's it's helpful to just kind of do the tracking and then do the mixing. Um, and then you can, you know, set this low, wait to put your plugins in, set this higher for mixing, and then introduce the plugins. So that's another thing you can try if uh, you don't want to deal with a low latency monitoring option. And that's about it. Check out that delay compensation video that I mentioned. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link to it in the description. And like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think of this video. If you like this topic, let me know in the comments below. If you have anything to add to this, I'm sure I left out something. I always do. Then please let me know. And other than that, I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. We have additional content on there. We have a Discord we're all hanging out on. It's been a lot of fun. So feel free to check that out if you want to check it out. I believe uh, anything above a dollar gets the full suite of stuff. And, and I come out with new videos every Wednesday. So thanks for hanging out. Okay. All right. Let's talk about low latency monitor monitoring. Dude, so... 
I made this Instagram reel a while back and it was about uh, sample rate and why they have 44.1 kilohertz as, you know, the sample rate that was introduced in the early days and um, kept as an option and why not something like 40 kilohertz, for example. And I totally, this is a bit of a retraction or an apology. I, I didn't make it very clear in my Instagram reel because, you know, time limit, but but I could have worded it better for sure. I definitely could have worded it better. So it's a quote from a book that I was talking about where they said that they rounded up basically to get at, I think it was up, to arrive at 44.1 kilohertz. And I said, there's no other reason, right? And that's true. According to the book, according to what I found, that's true. It was rounded. And that specific, specific number is only there it's only the option because of rounding, right? And so that's what I said in the Instagram reel. But some other people fairly, I think, felt like it was a bit misleading because I mentioned the Nyquist theorem as an example for why we wanted it close to that 44.1, right? So Nyquist theorem, range of human hearing, when you consider 20 kilohertz is the range of human hearing. And the Nyquist theorem, you have to sample it twice to reproduce that frequency. You arrive at about 40 kilohertz for what you should sample at. But there were other reasons that brought them closer to the 44.1. And I didn't elaborate on that, or I didn't even mention that those were there. So I'm really sorry I didn't mention that those were there. But the book wasn't lying. The book did reference those. And I was just trying to simplify it. So I just used the Nyquist theorem as my example for why they got it close to the 44.1. So, um, you know, there's other reasons like aliasing and compatibility with, I think it was a video. Uh, yeah. And that's why it was closer to 44.1 and kind of a weird number. And then rounding was what brought them to 44.1. So I just wanted to clarify that. I'm sorry if my Instagram reel was misleading, you guys. Um, I try to be very thorough, but, you know, it's bound to happen eventually. So please forgive me. Anyway, that's my little blooper. I hope my screen capture is still going. I'm going to find out. Okay, bye.